A man with no face sits on a slab, while his cats at home are still licking their blood-stained lips. A worker shaves the arm of a cadaver and suddenly it grabs her. If you think these are the most mortifying things to happen during a morgue worker's shift, you better get ready. All will be revealed in this ultra-shocking catalog of gore and ghastliness. Number 50. Okay, so this show is going to be gruesome at times, but we think we'll start with something that is downright scary. It comes from a woman who was asked about the freakiest things she'd be held in her long career as an embalmer, those people that pump a dead body full of chemicals to stop the body from decaying. The woman said she just started her career and was working at an independent mortuary service in the US, and one day she felt the urge to pee. She went to the restroom to do the business only to hear sobbing sounds coming from the room next door. In her own words, she wrote on a forum, the sound was coming from around a corner that led into a small room where we would store embalmed bodies ready to be delivered to their respective funeral home. She just figured that someone had gotten into the room and on seeing a body started to cry. But when the woman went to see what was up and possibly console the grieving person, all she found was an empty room. What she did find is the body of a young woman that was waiting to be embalmed. That woman had been shot in the side of the head. The budding embalmer wrote, I wasn't scared per se, but I'm pretty sure you could audibly hear my heartbeat. Today you'll hear some more of these frightening tales, but let's now get down with the messier side of death. Number 49. As you might have heard in some of our other shows about death, when you die things can still come out of your body. You naturally relieve yourself when you have one foot in the so-called afterlife. Writing on a forum, a nurse backed this up. While she wasn't an actual morgue worker, as a nurse she did have to take dead bodies down there now and again. In her own words she said, people poop themselves when they die. Before we take our bodies down to the morgue, we always have to clean up the poop. The job of a nurse is never ending. This particular nurse also said that spooky things happened to her when she went down to the morgue. She said the lights always flickered down there. They were all fine most of the time, but when we bring a body down, the lights always flicker. Really creeps me out, she explained. Okay, we bet you also didn't know that once you're dead, you could still become a father. Number 48. Yup, that sperm of yours is still useful even after you've kicked the bucket. It can be taken out of you, a process called posthumous sperm retrieval. The first case of this happening was in 1980 when a 30-year-old guy became brain dead after getting into a motor vehicle accident. His family, it seems, wanted some of his sperm, and they got it. But in this case, it seems like the sperm wasn't used to make a baby. Number 47. You have to go to 1998 to find the first baby that was made from a dead man's sperm. In most cases, you have to get the sperm within 24 hours after death, although there have been cases of it being used as long as 36 hours after death. There are a few ways the doctors can get the sperm out, but the one we like the most is called rectal probe electro ejaculation. We guess you can work that all out for yourself. It's actually a bit of a touchy topic for some people, with the Catholic Church once stating it wasn't keen on the idea. Some people belonging to Judaism have also said it's not right to take something from the dead. Now you obviously want to know if you can get an erection after you die. Number 46. The answer is yes. It's sometimes called a death erection, but we much prefer the term angel lust. It all depends on how you die, but if you die swiftly, it could lead to a rather long-standing stiffy. It's actually not that uncommon and often happens when someone has been shot in the head or hanged by a rope. Something might also come out, as one doctor said, explaining that angel lust is more or less a complete state of erection of the penis, where discharge of urine, mucus, or prostatic fluid is a frequent occurrence, present for one in three cases. Now we're going to get strange to the extreme. Number 45. If you were to ask yourself what kind of person shouldn't be working at a morgue, you'd probably say a serial killer. Well, at least one of them once did work in one. His name was John Wayne Gacy, the prolific US serial killer who also got into politics and had a part-time gig as a children's clown. Yep, killer clown is about as scary as life gets. But the story gets even more messed up when you discover that after leaving home as a teenager, he got a gig working at a mortuary in Las Vegas. According to one of the other mortuary attendants, creepy Gacy would sleep next to the embalming room. Gacy once admitted that one night he was a curious kind of mood and he got into one of the coffins containing a deceased young man. Gacy later wrote, the room where I stayed was known as the call room, right next to the embalming room. During May, the mortuary had 86 funerals over two months. I was a pallbearer for some 75, never knowing the person or family. As for his experience in the coffin, he said that after hugging the corpse, he became shocked that he liked it. So shocked that he decided it was time to return home to his family. The New Yorker explained, he grew frightened and jumped out and the next day called his mom. Okay, now we're on the topic of clowns, we think you need to hear this. Number 44. As someone remarked on a forum, this next story is like putting the fun back in funeral. The morgue worker said one time a dead clown arrived at his mortuary, but this clown had died right in the middle of a show and arrived at the mortuary with full makeup and costume. Apparently, this guy came from a family of clowns who'd been in the entertainment industry for some time. 
so they asked that the deceased be buried in full costume. They even asked that the funeral director get dressed up as a clown for the big day. The worker added family and friends had one teardrop painted near the eye. Definitely my strangest. Now for some stories about the talking dead. Number 43. Dead bodies don't actually talk, but they can sound very much alive when they make certain noises. That's because there is air trapped in the body and it needs to get out. This can sometimes sound like standing on some bagpipes. A young woman who worked as an apprentice at a place called Service Corps International said once she got the shock of her life when in the early stages of her apprenticeship she had to go and pick up a dead woman who was lying face down. As she did that, what came out of the deceased was a quite loud hey sound. The worst thing was that the family was standing close by, folks who would have really preferred to hear nothing. The woman wrote, it was very painful telling the family that it was just air escaping and not her still being alive. Ok, but what about the smell of a dead body? Number 42. It's hard to say how one smells because it all depends on what stage of decomposition the body is at. Gases are created by microorganisms in the body during those various stages of decomposition, so there is a whole medley of different stinks. One person described it as rotten eggs mixed with a sticky, sweet, foul, cheesy smell. But it's more diverse than that, as any professional will tell you. Scatoli is a compound that smells like poop, while the compound called indole gives off a mothball smell. Hydrogen sulfide is where you get the rotten egg smell, and a compound called methane thiol smells a bit like rotten cabbage. Dimethyl disulfide and trisulfide have been described as smelling foul, something close to garlic, but way worse. All people who work with the dead say, when it's bad, it's terrible. Now for an expression that you will never forget, disco rice. Number 41. The term is not only used by mortuary workers since we found a story in the New York Times that said it was also used by people who worked in garbage disposal. In terms of garbage, disco rice is seen when a bag splits and maggots go everywhere. That's not nice. But it's worse when the item that contains the dancing rice is a dead body. One mortician explained, we had this house call one time. The lady was dead a while. On the couch, all bloated as hell. When we started moving her, the abdomen busted. I had goo and maggots all over my leg. He added that he and his fellow workers all hated disco rice. But things could be worse, as you'll now see. There's nothing worse than having to pick up a body that's been decomposing to the extent that it stinks and is falling apart. We think you need to hear the words of one guy who was there when one of those such bodies was picked up. He said, as they picked him up, he split in half. The smell was unbelievable and as he burst, the smell intensified to the point where one of the guys who was moving the body actually vomited. I had to leave the room as I was gagging, it was so foul. He drained into the body bag and they dropped him in it, zipped up the bag and took him away. Sometimes, they are just too bad to even try and fix up. Number 39. One assistant wrote that when he was new to the job, he saw one particular body that he could not fix. In that case, he said the medical examiner didn't even start the stitching process. He added, I can still smell that one. But what happens to the body after that? Number 38. It's a good question. With one funeral director in the US saying often, we funeral directors are required to deal with human remains that have decomposed. He said he could work wonders with some bodies at times, but what he called the ravages of biology were so much that he has to tell the family what he called crushing news. That is, there can be no open casket. He explained, I try to offer some consolation to the family if any can be found by giving them the option of placing the remains in a gasketed, hermetically sealed casket, or if they're willing to consider it cremation to deal with the situation. This means that even though they won't get to see what's in the coffin, they can be assured that what was left of the human is there. In this case, double or even triple body bags might have been used because the smell is so strong. But what about if the body's missing just one part, like the head? Number 37. According to one funeral director, a missing head can be taken care of, much better than you can deal with something that has been ravaged by maggots. With a decapitated body, there are some steps to go through. She said the first of those steps is, We drain the brain prior via nostril with trocar. We place eye caps under the lids of the eyes. We stitch the jaw shut, single knot loop. She then puts the head in a bucket of formaldehyde and gets to work on draining the rest of the body. Then she washes the body, applies some lotion, and makes things look presentable. She added, seal the neck with duct tape and plastic. That part could be altered with maybe melted wax or gauze soaked in scented solutions then covered in plastic. After the head is reconnected, it gets a shave if need be and a hairstyle. A scarf will then be placed around the neck for viewing purposes, and hey, presto, you have a body that looks as though it didn't lose its head. The process is done with the utmost care, with the mortician saying, we respect this body beyond death. Because even though life is temporary, the human body is magnificent. The love the family has for each person will last for years, but allowing them a proper goodbye is respect for mankind. Number 36. You already know that dead bodies can make noises, but did you know they can move? You might have heard that a cadaver can suddenly just sit up, but you might have also heard that bit from a movie. They don't do that and never have, but they can definitely twitch and move a little bit. 
That's just because the muscles are still receiving nerve signals. When something called adenosine triphosphate or ATP is gone from the body, it can result in twitching muscles and even toes or fingers moving about. But a dead body cannot just sit up in the air. Number 35. With that in mind, we don't believe one story we found online. The poster said his cousin was a cop and got a call out to a mortuary one day after the alarm had gone off. According to his tale, a body sat up on a gurney just as the cop arrived, and so he shot the dead body. We call cow poop on that one. But we like the comment below that story that read, single-handedly stopping the zombie apocalypse sounds like a damn hero to me. Now for something else that sounds unbelievable, but this one is definitely true. Number 34. There's such a thing as coffin birth. Basically, it means a pregnant woman dies, but the fetus still comes out due to the gases squeezing in the uterus. You need to hear some real-life cases. There's one in the 1896 book called Anomalies and Curiosities of Medicine. It states that during the Spanish Inquisition in 1551, a woman was hanged and a few hours later, two, not one, infants came out of her. She was not the only case mentioned in the book. In 2005, a pregnant woman in Germany was found dead in her apartment after overdosing on heroin. We won't get into the details, but the gases had done their work. In 2007, there was a case in India, but the child survived, making it also a case of something called post-mortem delivery. Now for something mad rather than sad. Number 33. The story was told by a volunteer who said he worked in a hospital in a department he simply called storage, which is probably not the best of hospital jobs. He told a few stories, one of which included seeing a man being brought in inside separate boxes after he'd been crushed by a box flattener. But we're more interested in another story he told. He said the boyfriend of a deceased woman had tried a body heist. He explained he was her ex and decided it was his divine right to bury her in his yard instead of her husband of a year. The guy actually kicked through a door and got to his girl and then he wheeled her out in a wheelchair. He even got as far as a loading dock where he was stopped by an attendant who reminded him that patients are not allowed to exit through these doors, sir. The attendant obviously didn't know that the girl was dead. The guy then tried to wheel her out through the hospital main doors and that's where his plan fell apart after he was noticed by a family friend. Now you have to ask yourself this question. What happens when a body is too big for the mortuary's fridge? Number 32. This apparently happens quite often. It happened at one mortuary and the body was turned away. Instead, it was sent to a nearby zoo where the fridges were large enough. We found another case of this happening in Australia in 2014. The funeral director didn't know what to do and she said kept the body in a hearse and kept the AC running all night. The media explained she ended up forced to keep her engine running all night using three tanks of petrol as she checked the body every 30 minutes. The next day, she made some calls and the body was taken to a huge chiller for ships. According to that same story, this wasn't the first time there had been problems trying to store a very large body. We'll talk more about super large people later. Now we need to clear something up. Number 31. While people who work in mortuaries have seen what looks like hair and nails growing, they know this is not actually what's happening. With no oxygen getting to the brain and no glucose stimulating growth, it's just an impossibility. What's actually happening is dehydration causing the skin to retract, making it look like growth. Now let's talk about purge fluids. Number 30. These are the fluids that are purged from the body after death occurs. We found a person online who said she worked in a mortuary and said the purge fluids can be so acidic that they scar the body. Another guy said, I always slice the back of t-shirts, shirts, and jackets. It just makes it easier to dress. I don't like jostling around the body in case they purge some fluids. Really, can purge fluids be that much of a problem? To find this out, we looked at a 2014 booklet from the Department of Health titled Precautions for Handling and Disposal of Dead Bodies. It seems purge fluids can cause an injury, with Chapter C of that booklet recommending that if someone is hit by those fluids, they should watch the exposed parts immediately with lots of water. It added that all incidents of percutaneous and mucutaneous exposure should be reported to the supervisor. The injured person should immediately seek medical advice for proper wound care and post-exposure management. But what if a body just explodes? Number 29. This is highly unlikely, but it can happen. As you know, the body's temperature will usually decrease after death but in some cases it can get higher. This is known as post-mortem hyperthermia. Many things could make it happen such as certain drugs or various kinds of trauma. In the worst case, a body could explode. This happened in Australia in 2013, but the article didn't explain exactly how. It just said mourners were upset when a body in one of the coffins went off. The article read, In the heat of late January, a corpse exploded in a crypt at Preston Mausoleum in Melbourne's north, oozing fluids through an inadequate seal and down the granite faces of the vaults below. Number 28. The Washington Post talked about something called exploding casket syndrome, which in short is when a body bursts inside its casket. It said if you leave someone in a casket for long enough while their insides are stewing and then things heat up, you have a pressure cooker situation. The story went on. The next time relatives visit grandma, 
they could find her rotting remains oozing from her tomb in the form of a nauseatingly thick fluid. Funeral homes have actually been sued for this. You can only imagine what it would feel like to have your nearest and dearest explode in front of you. Stranger things have happened, as you'll now see. Number 27. Those people tasked with picking up dead bodies have seen it all. One of them wrote online, I transported a 60-year-old woman to the morgue after a severe car accident. She had run into a large tree head-on at 75 miles per hour. Face was mashed in completely. It turned out this woman had a tube of lipstick inside her brain. That's what can happen when you're doing your makeup while driving at high speed. Even students have to see this kind of stuff. Number 26. One former student talked about the first time he had to deal with what he called a bloater, meaning someone full of gas. As he was new to the job, when he heard the body making sounds, he thought the older staff were messing with him, something he said happens a lot. He soon realized that noisy bodies were normal, and while he got used to it, he said he saw family members faint at loved ones groaning. They also complain when things turn out different from what they expect, as you'll now see. Number 25. The same student as in the last story said one time a body was brought in and a guy had been shot in the head. It was not a pretty sight, even though the family had asked for an open casket. They were contacted and when the father saw that nothing could be done to fix up the head of his son, he agreed, no open casket. But just before the funeral, the family changed their mind and there was nothing the funeral director could do about that. Meanwhile, some of the other family members hadn't even been told how the kid had died. They got the shock of their lives when they looked inside the casket. The student said, we ended up getting a letter of complaint from other members of the family for the open casket. Okay, now for something out of this world. Number 24. This story goes back to the 1950s. An assistant working at a funeral home wasn't keen on his job since he said he kept hearing weird noises. One day, he had to pick up a deceased woman, and a bit later the mortician told him he had to go out for a while, so now it was just the assistant and the woman. Suddenly, the guy heard what he thought was a groan. He thought nothing of it, but then he heard another groan. That sound got louder and louder until the man picked up enough courage to go into the other room and see what was happening. The groaning was coming from the corpse, and when he lifted the back cover to his utter shock, the woman grabbed his arm. He apparently ran all the way home after that, although it turned out the woman had been in a coma, not dead. If you think that could never happen, think again. It's happened lots of times. Number 23. In 2019, a 70-year-old woman in Thailand named Pinit Sopajorn was pronounced dead at the hospital. As per the local custom, the woman's body was taken home by her relatives so there could be three days of prayer. Throughout this, the woman's body was in a coffin. After these ceremonies, her body was taken to the temple, Wat Amparan, to be cremated. The last thing that happened before she was sent into the flames was her face had to be washed. Her husband did that part, only as he was doing it, his wife got up and started muttering. We're not sure if you guys know much about Thai culture, but let's just say people take their ghosts seriously. The rising of the dead almost sent grieving relatives into shock. Still, they helped the woman out of the coffin. Turns out she wasn't dead after all. The newspaper story said the coffin and accoutrement at the funeral were burned and destroyed, according to superstition, to take away any bad luck. Oh, but it gets even worse. Number 22. You'd think these stories would not be that common, but you can't throw a mouse around the internet for long until you find lots of them. In January 2014, a young man in Kenya named Paul Mutora woke up after 15 hours in the morgue. It seems the workers who, like Thai people, were superstitious didn't exactly go to his aid. The BBC reported shocked mortuary workers at Naivasha Hospital ran away when the body stirred and was seen to be breathing. It was a good job he got up right then because they were about to embalm him, something we imagined would be pretty painful. Number 21. Also in 2014, a 78-year-old guy from Mississippi named Walter Williams shocked some funeral home staff. He was apparently in his body bag when he woke up. The staff was more than a bit surprised when they saw him trying to punch and kick his way out. He was reportedly overjoyed to be back in the land of the living, a consequence of his pacemaker restarting. In this case, the reason for a death certificate being signed was basically down to a lack of knowledge. With this next case, you could say that death was nailed on. Number 20. This story comes from a man who worked in forensics as an entomologist, someone who studies insects. You might wonder why an entomologist would be working with dead bodies, but the answer is simple. To estimate the time of death, you can look at the insects taken from the decomposing corpse. He admitted that this was about as gruesome an occupation as you can imagine. But he said the worst of all his cases was when he was sent to an eight-month pregnant mother who by the time he got to her was infested with a multitude of maggots, botflies, and moth larvae. He said it was monstrous to look at. In his own words, he said, the tiny bones of the baby were disintegrating under the unrelenting feasting of ham beetles, as its flesh was too dry for maggots to find purchase. They preferred the malleable flesh of the mother's face and breasts. As if the story couldn't get any uglier, he then said the appearance of all those insects working on her made it look as though she was giving birth in some kind of disturbing horror movie, explaining that the divots of botflies imbued in the flesh of her cheeks. This next one is a grim tale from a very long time ago. Number 19. 
The story has been passed on through generations. The person that most recently told it was a man who once studied with a professor. The professor told him that back in the day he used to work as a journalist for a small town newspaper. For the article, he decided it would be interesting to visit the local retirement home and talk to the people about their pasts. One of those old folks was a retired mortician who told him about one of the strangest days he had on the job. This was way back in the 1920s. There had been a huge blizzard one day and two teenagers on their way to school dance had gotten trapped in a carriage in the snow. The male of the two left the carriage but the girl stayed behind. It seemed she was stuck there for quite some time. Unfortunately, she froze to death, but the strange part of the tale is the mortician said in order to defrost her, he sat her in a rocking chair in front of his fire. Now let's talk about the dreaded decomp room. Number 18. This kind of room was talked about by a well-known medical examiner you might have heard about named Dr. G. She said the decomp room is basically the place where bodies in the very worst states are worked on. As for doing that kind of thing, she said, it's not so much the appearance, they can be green and bloated, and there's a lot of maggots, but the smell, you can imagine like 200 pounds of rotting hamburger on your counter, it's a bad smell. She even said, when you go home, if you haven't had time to shower, you stink of bodily decomposition. Although she noted that as a bonus, you get in line faster when you go to the grocery store. She said it doesn't bother her personally, saying that part of the brain associated with revulsion just calmed down over time. But for some morgue workers, there are some things that are just too much, as with this next guy. Number 17. His job was turning up the morgue to get eyes or parts of eyes to use for transplants, and that meant working with some pretty gory sights. One of them, he said, was a guy that had died and his cats had eaten his face. He explained just his face, nothing else. It was sort of decaying, but still somewhat normal looking dude, with a bright Halloween looking skull picked clean. He said another time he saw what remained of a person, saying there wasn't really much there at all, just a pile of bones, hair, and leathery tissue paired with a bucket of goo. That's probably better than what happened to this next person. Number 16. As you know, the fingers of the dead can curl after death. Well, one woman who worked in what's called tissue recovery said she was working on a body, trying to shave an arm, and she was holding the hand, and it gripped hers. Imagine that. Now let's get gory again. Number 15. This guy was a mortician for the army working at a place called Richmond Morgue. He'd seen a lot of things during his career, but he said the worst sight was a guy who had been spattered in a logging accident, and we mean totally crushed. The guy explained, what made it so creepy was how the skin could stretch. His face stretched with his splatted skull, making it seem like Looney Tunes. This next one is kind of funny. Number 14. A former funeral director's assistant wrote online that back when he was working, a woman had asked for one request after she died. That was to keep her eye open, the eye that was in fact a glass eye. It was a bit of a scare for everyone who looked in the casket. Number 13. In case you don't know, when they fix you up for your funeral, they sometimes glue your eyes closed and sew up your mouth. No one wants to look at a gaping mouth with wide open eyes. In fact, quite a bit of work happens on a person's face, what they called in the trade setting of the features. Part of this includes putting spiked cups under the eyelids so the eyes don't cave in. Now for something you probably didn't want to know. Number 12. When a person is embalmed and fiddled about with, there is a lot of waste, with one expert on the matter saying there's usually in the region of 120 gallons of the stuff, what he called funeral waste. In other words, there's a lot of blood, pee, poop, and general contents of organs, not to mention the waste chemicals. And where does it all go? He said, down the drain like anything else. Number 11. But get this, not all morticians want to embalm you and make you look pretty. One of them, at a place called Undertaking LA, told Wired Magazine, that it's best to let the dead people look dead. He said a chemically preserved body looks like a wax replica of a person. Bodies are supposed to be drooping and turning very pale and sinking in while in decomposition. Within a day or so after they died, you should be able to see that this person has very much left the building. The reason was that he said it'll help with the grieving process. Number 10. That same guy dropped a bit of a bombshell when he said some parts of dead people end up as road signs. Yeah, you heard that right. Apparently, the family can request that bits of implants are reused after the cremation, and once melted down, they sometimes return as signs. Now, let's discuss to you again. Number 9. A woman in the US had died, so she had to be moved. The problem was, she was what you might call a large lady and her apartment was up three flights of stairs. As the move happened, the woman's teary-eyed family was watching, hoping they wouldn't drop her. One of the assistants doing the moving was struggling quite a lot, and at one point her head was pretty much at the same height as the stretcher. And so was the dead woman's butt. The next part of the story went like this. The thing about dead bodies is that gas starts to exit pretty quickly, and I'm sure you know where my story's going. The body started letting out farts straight into my friend's face. Burp, 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 with every step down. The awkward part was trying to stay composed in front of a grieving family. Number 8. 
Probably one of the yuckiest stories we read about was a son talking about his father's worst day on the job. His pop told him that one time an elderly guy had died in the bath, but no one found him so he decomposed in the bath. The father described what he saw as human soup. But was that as bad as this next one? Number 7. A guy said he was on pathology rotation at the county medical examiner's office in medical school when he was told to go out to a house where someone had died. The house he said looked like a junkyard since the deceased had been a pretty eager hoarder. The problem was among all that trash was a person who'd been dead for three weeks during a pretty hot summer. So when he and his crew got there, the place was infested with bugs. That meant doing the autopsy in what he called a special containment room, which we guess is like the aforementioned decomp room. In his own words, this is how he said it went down. The body was absolutely full of all manners of insect life, maggots, beetles, flies, roaches, everything. The smell was horrendous. I still get the willies thinking about all those bugs pouring out, running around the floor, flying around the room, etc. Number 6. This next person said he got the shock of his life when working on getting his licenses to be an embalmer and funeral director. He said the smell did in fact get to him at the start, as did working on young folks. But that one story that stuck in his head was this. He explained, The thing that always spooks me, though, is when I'm raising an axillary artery. The site that we look for is in the area directly distal toward the fingers away from the body mass to the armpit. As he would do this, the arm would often move, but the thing that really freaked him out was when a hand grabbed his own. So we guess this happens more than you think. Now for something just a little bit sad. Number 5. This guy couldn't hack it when he was a mortician's assistant, and we don't blame him. He'd already worked on a few cases, but the straw that broke the camel's back was when a man came in who'd been shot in the face. This guy reminded him of Sid from the Ice Age movie. Looking at that, he had a kind of disconnect, wherein he was cleaning up and then suddenly he realized this person had not long ago been walking and talking. Cleaning up bits of humans wasn't for him, and he quit. Ok, we need at least one nice story here. Number 4. That is, some funeral homes provide dogs to help grieving friends and family. Before they offer some emotional support, they've apparently been trained in grief dog therapy. We don't know how this works, but one funeral home said grief therapy dogs offer this improved state of mind to those who are suffering from the loss of a loved one and can help aid in the transition of learning to cope with the loss. Number 3. We asked in the intro what is the worst thing that can happen on the night shift. As you know, things can go bump in the night and bodies can definitely move and make noises, but there is worse. This assistant said he was working alone at night between two big freezers that were stocked with what he described as various bits and remains of individuals. He added, We only got those whose cause of death needed to be verified, and usually meant we got the interesting cases. He said he soon got used to the job though, seeing around 100 bodies in a week. But the thing that bothered him the most were the large people, those in his own words that were giants, perhaps 4 or 500 pounds. He explained, the one that sticks out is a woman that was 510 pounds and was hit by a car and ejected at high speeds, then hit by an 18-wheeler. As you can guess, this woman was much harder work than someone of a slighter build. He said piecing her back together was like doing some macabre jigsaw puzzle. But he said there was something worse, explaining, the worst is always decomposing bodies and water finds. It's the worst smell of all the bunch by far, and the spongy, soupy texture bodies get from long times in an aquatic environment is the absolute worst. Those people, he said, tend to burst on you. Number 2. In 2015, the media reported about a Russian man who'd been partying hard with his friends at someone's house. He got what you might call dead drunk since he passed out and his buddies couldn't revive him. The Koskonsky Vesti newspaper reported that when medics turned up, they too couldn't bring the man out of it. After checking his vital signs, they said, sorry guys, your friend has died. He was then taken off to the morgue. But as you already know, plenty of folks have come back from the dead or apparent death. This guy woke up later telling the press he was cold and frightened. He had no idea why he was surrounded by dead bodies. He then banged on the doors and someone let him out. Not to be a party pooper, he didn't go home and instead went back to his friend's house. He was surprised to find that rather than boozing, they were all mourning his death. One of them thought he was a ghost and fainted on the spot. But once matters became clear, they picked up the booze again and carried on partying, this time celebrating life. Ok, last one and it's just sad. Number 1. In short, one day a guy was on the job with his co-worker and they got a call to pick up a dead body. Turned out that the young man who was dead was the overdose son of the co-worker. And that's about as grim as it gets in terms of these tales, and now we think you should watch Best Evidence of Life After Death. Or have a look at this old classic, What Happens When You Die?